Having talked about these, let's see how we can apply these in our classroom. This is an interesting part. How to use these demographics? Because what is the point? What is the purpose if we know these and we can't use them somehow in our classroom? So in applying these demographics to our class, the first thing you need to know is that as a teacher, you need to embrace this. Don't try to fight it. Don't try to, <laughs> don't try to do so much to try and shift students around. You need to embrace it and know that it's not your fault. Teaching, I always say, it's not magic. It's not your fault when a student falls in a particular place. Don't try and personalize the struggle of the student. Just embrace it. Just accept it as it is. When a student is good, just accept that they're good. When they're not good, just accept that they're not good. And then from there, you can proceed to doing something about it. So that also means you need to know where every student falls. To be able to do something about it, you need to know where every student falls on the scale. And don't try to move students in the scale unless you are willing to do the hard work to make it happen. If you're not willing to use a lot of time to communicate with parents, to talk to the student, to give them extra work, to supervise them, don't try to do it. And it doesn't mean you're a good or a bad teacher. It's just the way it is. Now, you need to deal with each category differently. You need to understand that in their learning, 20% of the students are good. And therefore, you need to push those students. You need to give them a push. Because these students are going to tell you whether what you're teaching is difficult or not. While you're teaching, they are going to be the first to say, teacher me, I want to answer. Teacher, I know it. I know the answer. They're going to give you energy in class. When you come to the middle, they are going to validate your teaching methods. So when you pay attention to the middle 70 and see how they are doing, when they are getting it and they are getting there, you know that, okay, my teaching plan for today is working. If they are not getting it, then you need to start doing something on your teaching methods. So that's how to think about this. Those who are at the bottom, don't worry about them. Just apply simple rules to them. Just go through the motion with them. Review with them and you're done. Let them say the words and you're done. Because guess what? No matter what you do, no matter how hard you try, they're just going to be in that category. That's what this grouping is about. It's about accepting that the student cannot just easily change where they are. Don't be insensitive to the lower group in your application of these demographics. Don't go about saying, you're bad, so you're bad. I'm just going to ignore you. I'm the... That's not what this is about. We, we did these demographics so that we know how to deal with them. Not so we can be insensitive and mistreat certain students. If they're bad, apply the right rules. If you know they have a problem with discipline, you have to set rules to address those issues. That is exactly what we are thinking here. And we'll get into a whole lot of that later. We'll get into classroom management later and how these demographics help us with classroom management. Now, you can't do something about everyone. Teacher, just understand this. If there's one advice I can give you and go away, know that you can't help every student in your class. And that's just the truth. You cannot help every student on, on the same level. It's just not going to happen. You need to embrace this, as we said. It doesn't mean you're good or bad. That, that's not what it means. It doesn't mean you're a bad teacher. This demographics, most teachers don't know about it. So they try really hard to try and control a certain student, to try and do something to... You're going to be frustrated if you don't learn about these. So, for instance, let's take something like classroom discipline. 20% are good. You don't need to control them. Don't, don't go overboard to try and deal with those. They are, have excellent control. 70% will follow whoever determines the energy of the class, whether it's you, the teacher, or the 10% who are always naughty. So, if you leave the 70% group to the 10%, they're going to follow them and you have a rowdy class. But if you set good rules, you're going to determine how the class energy is. And that 70% is going to be with you. So for instance, you can tell the whole class, if you're bad, you are going to sit here. And guess what? 
the first person to sit there is not going to be somebody from the top 20%. It's not even going to be somebody from the 70%. It's going to be somebody from the 10%. This way, you have controlled the 10%. When you put him on that seat, you have restricted the 70% from following that 10% kid. This is how to think about demographics. I'm sending you a message here. I'm trying to say that. Know that you cannot apply the same rules to every student in your class. And therefore, you need to consider these demographics and come up with methods that apply differently to everyone. There are certain things that you determine in class that will not affect the 20%, but it will affect the 70 and the 10. There are certain things that would not affect the 10 and the 70, but will affect the 20. For example, when a lesson is going great and the 20% are participating and therefore the class energy is a little high and you ask everyone to shut up or to keep quiet, that means you have silenced the 10. It doesn't affect them in any way because they are not learning. You have silenced the 70, but you have also silenced the 20 who are getting something out of your lesson. So think about how to apply this. Apply this very, very properly, very, very carefully, let me put it that way. And this is a practical guide. Push the top. 20% at the top always have this mindset. They have something coming for them. Always give them the push. Give them the push they need. Give them the push they need. The 70 are those you need to focus on. When you push the top, they'll go quickly and they'll be gone. The 70, put a whole lot of your effort and attention on them. Focus on how their progress is. Focus on how your methods are affecting them. If it's not good, you change it. If it's not, if the games didn't work, you change it. If the, if the songs didn't work, you change it. Everything to suit the middle. Not the top, because the top, whatever you do, they'll get it. But the middle, focus on them. The bottom, just process them. Do your due diligence. That's what it means. Don't ignore them. Don't be insensitive to them, like we, like we said. If today's lesson is dog, cat, fish, make sure you have had maybe five minutes with them. Let them say dog, cat, fish. Give the homework. Let it go home. Tell parents, hey, your child is at this level. Please. Try and review with them. You've done your bit. Don't personalize their struggle. Don't be sensitive about this. It's not your fault.